This is the all-new fourth-generation Toyota Harrier, launched in our market by UMW Toyota Motors, the official distributor and manufacturer for Toyota vehicles in Malaysia. It arrives once again in fully imported form straight from Japan, but now with a new engine, new gearbox and new platform. There's a lot of new things to talk about in addition to this bold new design. So let's get straight into it. My name is Ayman Abdullah. This is Malaysian Motoring and this is our walk around of the new fourth generation Toyota Harrier. start our walk around at the front uh, rather taking in the whole car so like I said this is the fourth generation Toyota Harrier so as you can see it has this bold striking new design one of the uh, highlights of the front are the new slim bi-beam LED headlights with this very distinctive double line daytime running light it is very pretty it is underlined by this chrome strip that actually stretches across the entire width of the front end under which sits a very large downturn air breather the front end of the harrier certainly looks like a very menacing thing it's very bold very futuristic very of the now in fact if you looked at this you would be within reason to mistake it for a Lexus. All of these very sharp creases and so on, it just looks very distinctive, very bold, and very, very pretty. Now going down to the side, we have Bridgestone Alenza tires, which wrap around 18-inch alloy wheels, by bi bitone alloy wheels, which admittedly do look a little bit small on this car, but then again, the Harrier is more about comfort than anything else. So having nice, thick tires means that it should be able to provide a pretty good primary ride. Going down the side, you have this almost coupe-like roof line. This is very important to point out because, as I'm sure you know, Toyota actually has another mid-size SUV contender in the Toyota RAV4. So this exists for the more bolder, distinctive customer who wants a car that is more expressive, perhaps like themselves. So you have that more sloping roof line. The window line is framed in chrome. You have these very nice dual-tone uh, wing mirror caps with a little bit of chrome here. I think the chrome here is unnecessary, but it really sets off the just the little wing mirror housing of it. Now you have a little bit of black cladding on the bottom. Again, it is an SUV, so you are expected to have a little bit of, you know, active lifestyle integration like that. Chrome door handles, again, sloping down to this nice little quarter light here. And then round the back of this car is really pretty. Now you have this slim tail light that stretches all the way across, replete with a light bar that goes all the way broken up only by the Toyota badge. If you saw as you were coming down, it has this very nice gentle taper down to the rear. The rear and the Harrier is really pretty. I really, really like the look of this car. The only trouble I have is by making the tail lights slimmer, they've had to move the indicator and reverse lights down to the bumper. Now, some people don't take issue with that. Most people wouldn't, but I'm insane. And because of that, I don't quite like the fact the indicators are down here. It's a little niggle. But while we're back here, let's take a look at the boot, which actually has a kick to open function, if I'm not mistaken. If I... Nope, I'm clearly not intelligent enough to do that. There is a button here somewhere. Nope, that's not it. That's the one. So, once you do get the boot open, because there's actually, I think there's a button in there to lock the boot. I think that's what I tried to trigger. So once you get into the boot, you realize that there is actually quite a lot of space back here. The opening is nice and wide. There is almost no load lip. There's these nice little scuff plates as well as to protect the boot. And there isn't a lot of lip here either for you to damage on the way in. It is nice and deep. However, height is a little bit restricted due to that sloping roof line. But otherwise, it's a pretty nice big boot. You also have a tonneau cover, which can be hidden underneath the boot floor, which brings me to the fact that under here, there is a little bit of room in this little removable plastic tray under which sits the space saver spare tire this of course is very rugged and is very easy for you to clean so if you have dirty shoes or whatever you can just chuck it under here and it'll be fine as i'm sure you've noticed there is this um pillow going on here now i couldn't quite figure this out until i sat and pondered it for a while and i realized that because this is the harrier the vehicle that blurs the line between toyota and lexus for them refinement and comfort is the name of the game and so they put this here so that if you do put anything in here any sound uh, made by these items rattling in the boot will be dampened by this cushiony thingy which is quite nice 
I think that it's really nice that they've thought that far ahead. And as I said earlier, you can hide the tonneau cover sort of down here, the little openings in the plastic for you to stick the tonneau cover underneath. Now, enough about that. Let's go take a look at the interior where the good news continues after it beeps at me. Now, getting into the Harrier, that blurred line between uh, Toyota and Lexus continues. So for starters, the interior design of this car is so pretty. It's so expressive and different. It looks bold. It looks brave. I love the way this cabin looks. So you have a dual tier dashboard where on the top level, you just have the two uh, air convent at the furthest edges and then in the middle you have this very distinctive center console where you have the physical buttons for your dual zone climate control you also have your large center touchscreen which unfortunately is not the largest that you can get for the Harrier but this is the same unit that we've seen in the Toyota RAV4 which even though it doesn't look like the best integrated system it does work very well it's very simple and easy to use and so that's always a benefit and of course it comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard now sitting here there are a couple of things that hit you immediately. For starters, the driving position is fantastic. The steering wheel is perfectly aligned with the driver. The pedals are perfectly aligned and you have an organ type accelerator pedal, the type that's hinged on the bottom instead of on the top. So as a result, you can actually sit here very comfortably and it does feel like a premium car. Everything that you touch and feel is very high quality. The steering wheel is leather wrapped. You get leather wrapped door cards. You get even a leather top stitched leather top dash. There is some plastic around the place, like up here on the dash, this is soft pl touch plastic, but down here you do get some scratchy stuff, but it really isn't all that bad. More importantly, going back to the center console, you have this very distinctive design for this element. I don't know how I'd describe it, but it looks fantastic. And they've integrated the ambient lighting so smoothly along the sides. It looks fantastic. And um, in all those other places, there are some materials used here, which is sort of like this textured plastic stuff, which again, looks fabulous. The only odd thing that I find is the fact that the engine start-stop button is somehow integrated into the center stack. It's a bit weird because I usually look for my start button sort of like here or here. And for some reason, it's here. You have a wireless charging tray down here. You have some USB ports and auxiliary in. Not sure why anyone would use that. You have a couple of cup holders here. You have a large center bin with the buttons down here for heating stupid, but you have cooled seats, ventilated seats, which is very important for our market. Now going from here, we'll look up here where you have a full glass roof, a two-piece panoramic moonroof. And the best part is at the touch of a button, you can frost it. It's so cool. This electrochromatic film that goes over the glass can frost it at the touch of a button. It looks fantastic. It will wow your passengers. And of course, when you frost it, it isn't completely obscure. You still get some light in. So if you want soft, like softer lighting in the cabin, you can do that. Or if you just want it shut, you can just close the roller blind. In any case, seated here, going back to the sitting itself, these seats are really sculpted as well. They hold my back perfectly. It's so comfortable. And the best part is, in a Toyota, I'm sat here looking at a pretty large, high-definition heads-up display. I want to see more of that on Toyota because it looks really bloody good. In any case, this seat is set up to my driving position when you can save up to two presets on this electric leather seat. Now, since this is set up my driving position, as I said earlier, we should move to the back, but not before I quickly mention my videographer has told me that I've forgotten something. In this car, instead of a rear view mirror, you actually get a digital rear view mirror. So there's actually a camera mounted on the rear windscreen and via the flick of a button, I'm gonna twist this so you can see it. At the flick of a button, it goes from mirror to camera, mirror, camera. Now, I know you're thinking, what's wrong with the mirror? And you're probably right. But the reason why you have this is because if you have passengers in the back or if you're stupid and you've packed the boot all the way to the roof and you can't see, you have this. So there is absolutely zero obscurity now from the driver's view. So as a result, you have absolutely no excuse for not being able to see at all. Toyota has made mention of the fact that this is effective both in the day and at night. So I'm guessing that the image adjusts depending on lighting conditions outside. Anyway, I've set the seat up in my driving position. Let's go and see what the accommodations are like at the rear. Now, in the back of the Harrier, 
again the good news continues so for starters i have loads of knee room and i have loads of headroom and i represent the national average the best part is this seat bench actually extends all the way almost all the way to the back of my knees so actually sat back here in the seat's most reclined position i could sit back here for a nice long time. It is really comfy and really roomy back here. I also have a couple of aircon vents, proper aircon vents back here. I have a couple of USB-A sockets down here too. I have a seat back pocket. I have nice big windows, a grab handle. The quality back here is just as nice too with this nice soft leather all the way up here and more of that textured plastic down here. And it is a really nice place to be. I also have an armrest with a couple of cup holders and of course if I am a child I could be seated in an isofix mounted child seat. So as far as I'm concerned this is all pretty good. Um, I'm trying to find things I don't like. Maybe I would prefer if this interior wasn't black. Um, I think that even though you have the moon roof and all that nonsense, I just feel like a lighter coloured interior would have really worked with this car in order to make it feel a lot more premium. There is something inherently premium about having a light coloured interior. And I don't care what people want to say about, oh, it's difficult to maintain and blah, blah. You bought a luxury car, just pay for it, will you? But as far as I'm concerned, the accommodations in here are fantastic. Now, unfortunately, this is a static preview of the Toyota Harrier, so we cannot take this car for a drive so I'm going to talk to you about what's going on under the bonnet. So at the front you get a 2 litre dynamic force engine which produces 173 PS and 203 Newton meters of torque paired to a direct shift CVT which sends power to the front wheels. Now the dynamic force engines by Toyota are among the most thermal efficient in the business and as a result you can expect to get pretty decent fuel consumption numbers from this thing and thanks to the fact that it uses a direct shift CVT you can get access to a lot of that torque very early on so the car will not feel a little bit stubborn. Now compared to the previous generation Toyota Harrier that came with a 2 litre force in the turbocharged engine so that will always be a little bit peppier but this I believe is the best blend of performance both on the motorway and as well as in town which is very important given that the majority of these cars will probably be used in town anyway. Now enough about that, we'll also talk about safety because that's another important highlight of the new Harrier. This car is now based on Toyota's new global architecture and as a result, it gets Toyota's very latest suite of active safety features. As a result, you get things like rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, lane tracing, you get adaptive cruise control, I believe it's full speed which means it should be able to help you in traffic as well, you get pre-collision warning, front departure alert and all sorts of other good stuff. In addition to all of this, of course, this car comes with cameras which means it's very easy for you to manoeuvre and visibility in this car is also pretty excellent which means that driving around in it should be a pretty easy ordeal. As far as I'm concerned this is a very mature and polished SUV offering from Toyota and it looks pretty damn good too. Now to conclude this video, of course, we have to talk about price. I understand the format's a bit weird because I'm still seated in the back. Unfortunately, I have many colleagues outside who are also filming, so I'm going to stay in here where it's safe, controlled and quiet. So the Toyota Harrier is now available for 249,000 ringgit with the SST exemption because this car is fully imported, so it's not a 100% SST exemption, it's only a 50% SST exemption. Once the SST comes back, this car will retail at 259,000 ringgit, so there's a 10,000 ringgit difference depending on whether you get it during the tax holiday or after the tax holiday. In any case, this does mean that the Harrier is positioned slightly higher than the Toyota RAV4, which is available with a 2.5 litre engine and most of the same uh, ADAS features and so on. Now, in our review of the Toyota RAV4, we commented that it is a very strong, dynamic and refined presentation, which means this car should be measurably better in every possible way. We certainly look forward to test driving the new Toyota Harrier when it becomes available for media test drives, but as far as I'm concerned, on the surface of it, it looks like a pretty good offering. Given the fact the Harrier is such a strong nameplate in our market, it has been the Toyota SUV of choice for discerning customers, usually through <coughs> grey importers. The fact that UMW Toyota is offering another generation of the Harrier properly authorizedly imported into Malaysia means you can enjoy the Harrier experience with the worry-free experience of knowing that your car is covered by a five-year unlimited mileage warranty. You tell me which great importer will do that, that is worth its weight in gold. So as far as I'm concerned, if you're a Harrier fan like me, this is now the car for you.
in any case thank you so much for watching our walk around if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel hit the little bell icon so you're notified every time we make a new upload don't forget to follow malaysian motoring on facebook twitter instagram and you can follow my socials all the links are in the description below thank you so much for watching hope you guys are staying safe and staying healthy take care guys jangan bodoh Oh